Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Como Live, brought to you by the Legacy Amendment. My name is Anne, and today we are going to be talking all about hermit crabs. Um, as usual, if you have a question during my talk today, please feel free to go ahead and put that in the comments. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about what do hermit crabs need to stay happy and healthy. So we have one of our little education hermit crabs here. He's a little shy, so we'll see how this goes. He's going to roll this right off. He's making breaks for it, so we'll have to keep an eye on him. So first, um, when we're talking about what makes, uh, helps hermit crabs stay happy and healthy, um, we need to kind of talk about what happy and healthy looks like for a hermit crab. He always makes a break for it off the front of the table, and then I gotta put him back, and then he's shy, and he'll reset here in a second. So, um, briefly, you should know that there are over 800 different species of hermit crabs in the world, and so we can talk kind of in generalizations, um, but today I'm gonna mostly talk about terrestrial hermit crabs, or hermit crabs that live on the land, and more specifically, this species of hermit crab. So this guy we have right here, he is a Caribbean hermit crab, also known as the purple pincher. Um, this species, purple pincher, is one of the two most common hermit crabs you find in the United States that are kept as pets. The other one is the Ecuadorian. Um, it's also important to note that when we're talking about hermit crabs, that all hermit crabs uh, kept in captivity currently are wild caught. It was only until 2018 um, that the first person in the United States was actually able to captively breed hermit crabs for the first time. And so while they've had some really great success there, um, unless you've specifically applied to adopt one of those specific captive bred babies, any hermit crabs in human care right now have been wild caught. So I think that's why it's really important to make sure that we are making sure that this crab is happy and healthy because it's our responsibility. We've removed him from the wild, so we need to do our very best by him. So animals typically need three things to be happy and healthy, which is food, water, and shelter or ecosystem, and we'll talk about that. So I'd like to talk first about food. So you can see I've got a little snack down there for him, but he's like, uh, no, I'm not interested in snacks today. I just want to run off the front of the table here. If I grab you slower, will you? Oh, come here, pal. There we go. Good job. So they are, oh, there we go, <laughs> scavengers. And so they do a really great job of cleaning up beaches and kind of the edge of the forest as well, d depending on the species. Some species don't live really on beaches at all. They live in tropical forests. But this species um, lives both in forests and on the beach. And so they do a really great job of cleaning up seaweed and fish and dead animals and decaying vegetation that falls to the uh, forest floor or washes up on shore. They are omnivores, so they will eat a little bit of everything, plant material and animal material. And they are also opportunistic. So if they have an opportunity to eat something, they are gonna go ahead and take that opportunity. Some species of hermit crabs actually will practice cannibalism, a larger crab on a younger, smaller crab. Um, so they always have to be careful, even amongst their own kind. Water is really important to hermit. Oh, I should really quickly go back and say, you may have noticed the snacks today are popcorn. Um, hermit crabs in human care can eat a lot of things that we keep in our pantries. Um, so basically fresh fruits and vegetables, dried fruits and vegetables, um, meat as well. Most hermit crabs I've met tend to really love a piece of popcorn. He's too busy thinking about running off the front of the table. So I can tell he was sniffing it earlier. You can see his two little He's got four antennas, the two long ones that are straight, and then the two little bent ones right there. The little bent ones are the antennules, and those are what he uses for um, tasting. And so when he can see those wiggling around, he's thinking, he's smelling and tasting. But he's like, oh, I'm out, I'm out of here now. Going over the log, good, good tactic this time, pal. Oh, there we go. How about you go right there? So under human care, hermit crabs get a lot of different um, fresh fruits and veggies and dry, dried fruits and veggies. They like to eat a, a piece of shrimp now and then, or maybe a piece of chicken as well, um, those types of things. Water is exceptionally important for hermit crabs um, for three different reasons. Of course, drinking, just like all animals, hermit crabs need to drink. Um, but more important for hermit crabs is for breathing. So hermit crabs start their lives in the ocean. Um, female, and so also for breeding, I'll kind of combine those in together. Um, females lay their eggs at, right into the ocean, and as soon as they hit the ocean water, they hatch into this kind of larval stage called zoa. 
Um, they can lay about 10,000 eggs at a time. Come here, pal. But very few of those will actually make it to land. They become part of the plankton cloud, and of course, lots of animals in the ocean like to eat plankton. Um, so they need that water for breeding purposes. And then if they make it through all their larval stages and climb onto land, because they started their lives in the ocean, they still have gills. They have these modified gills. And in order to breed, those gills need to stay moist. So all hermit crabs carry a little bit of water in their shell. It's called shell water to make sure that they have that kind of extra spare amount of water with them at all times but they also need humid air. If the air ever dries out and they don't have that shell water, they actually will suffocate um, because they don't have that humidity keeping those gills moist. And so humidity and water is uh, probably one of the most important things for hermit crabs. Oh, he's like, do we want popcorn? No, he's like, well, how dare you offer me popcorn? I did this nice thing. Are you going, pal? Oh, there we go. The third most important things for hermit crabs is shelter and habitat. So let's talk a little bit about shelter first because of course when people think of hermit crabs, they think of carrying their shells on their back. And so some people don't know, hermit crabs, those shells are not a part of them. They find the shells and they wear them. And as they grow larger, they find larger shells. You can see over here, um, if you wanna scan over here, I do have some shells. So if you're keeping hermit crabs as a pet or under human care, um, you do have to have an, a large collection of shells for them to change into and grow into. And of course, hermit crabs can be picky. Like this right here is like one of my favorite shells. I think it's just beautiful. Um, but have my crabs ever worn that shell? No, they have not. Or I really think like a clear shell would have been really cool to have my hermit crabs in because then I could see, oh, this is what they look like. Um, so I spent some money on a clear shell. They never wore it and now they've outgrown it. So <laughs> money wasted. At least it's still cool to look at. Um, in the wild, they'll actually have these events called shell cascades, where if a shell becomes available, a hermit crab might go up to the shell, feel around, see if it's the right size for him, and if it's not, he'll get in line. And then another crab will come along and check out that shell, and another, and another, and another, and they line up in order from largest to smallest. And then once a crab comes along that can fit into that shell, he takes that shell, and then the next crab takes his shell, and on and on and on, it becomes a shell cascade event. There's actually really cool videos about that um, online that, where you can see it happening. It's just so interesting to watch these hermit crabs like line up in order from largest to smallest and then just boop, 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 change shells. So they carry these shells with them because they have soft abdomens. So they have these really hard exoskeletons on their front um, six legs, their, their front two claws, their four walking legs, their car carapace, their head there. But their abdomen, which is wrapped around the inside of the shell here to hold on, is soft. It doesn't have a protective covering. And so that's why they need to have a little home to carry that with them. And of course, they prefer snail shells, but really anything will do in a pinch. You may have seen videos of like hermit crabs wearing trash, or I've seen like a terrifying video of a hermit crab walking around with a doll's head instead of a shell. Absolutely terrifying. But a piece of trash is better than nothing because without a shell or without a home, they are, they're vulnerable to being eaten by a seabird or something like that. And actually, shell shortages are a really big concern for hermit crabs. People go to the beach and they collect shells because, of course, they're gorgeous, but other animals need those shells as well. And so if they can't find a shell, they'll wear anything as possible. They live in uh, tropical areas, and so heat is also really important for them as well. Um, if they get too cold, um, they can't function as well. And because they are, have an exoskeleton, they're a species that molts. And so that means that when they get too big, they shed their skin and grow new skin, basically new exoskeleton, and that's how they can increase their size. And in order to molt, they need really, really deep substrate, about six inches deep for them to bury themselves. And then they slide out of their old, old skin and they're super vulnerable at this point because they're soft and squishy and they can be eaten really easily. And it can take, depending on how old the hermit crab is, anywhere from three weeks to three months to finish that molt. Purple pincher hermit crabs like this guy are a big responsibility, not only meeting their required needs, um, but if done right, these guys can live to be 30 years or more under human care. And so sometimes people get these because they think they're a throwaway pet. You see them in the pet store and they sell you a little tank and it's like, oh, this will be easy. And then they live a year or two and you're like, well, I did my best. But actually they need about 10 gallons per hermit crab, six inches of substrate, humidity and 
um, temperature at a constant 80 degrees, lots of access to fresh food and water, access to both salt water and fresh water. And if you do all that correctly, then you'll have a friend for 30 years. But they all have unique little personalities. They love to climb. Setting up their tanks can be a lot of fun because they love to explore and hide as well. And so they can be really fun little personalities and you can feed them a little piece of popcorn every now and then and they can tend to enjoy that as well. Do we have any questions today? All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today on this episode of Como Live. I hope you enjoyed my little hermit crab friend, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks.